Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the business show that is disrupting the way you think about your business. What is Harmonious? It is the 10 letter acronym, the 10 disciplines that you need to master in order to scale your company efficiently. And I got a surprise for you today. I have an amazing guest lined up and we have an acronym battle. We are going to go. <laughs> My guest, Steve, on the screen here, he has an acronym. His is seven letters. Ours is 10 letters. If we're keeping score, I'm winning at the moment. But let's see who ultimately wins at the end of this. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. My core values are also an acronym, which are six more letters. So I'm up by three now. Ooh, he's up by three. Okay. It's 13 to 10 at the start of the episode. Enough fun for one episode. Steve, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Brandon. I'm excited. It's been uh, it's it's been a day so far. Uh, I actually have three recordings today, but I was out of all of them looking very forward to spending some time with you. I uh, kind of did some back-end research, and I think just what you're trying to solve and what you're out there doing is something that's really, you know, near and dear to my heart. And I'm passionate about it as well. So excited to be here, man. In the, uh, the last spirit of competition, I, I appreciate that. And that is received loud and clear. I have nine recordings today. So I'm, I think I'm back on top. And, All right. uh, <laughs> you're winning. All right. You're winning. You're Enough winning. of that. Listen, we're already having a good time. We're going to talk about communication, elevating your leadership today. Um, but Steve, why don't you tell the audience a little bit? Uh, what do you, what do you do? Let's start there. You know, at the end of the day, I bring it down to two core pieces, and it really is making leaders better leaders and making employees better employees. And I mean that in the best way possible of really putting it in a nutshell, helping the humans in a business just elevate themselves and be the best that they can be. So they're both intrinsically winning their internal motivations, whatever drives them, but extrinsic and extrinsically the business, the the goals, the objectives they're trying to hit, those things are being achieved as well. And, you know, I think everybody wants to live and be in a winning environment in a living world. And I just build the resources. And ultimately, as you kind of alluded to there, the communication channels and pathways to help elevate that as the opportunity at hand. Yeah, you know, I love this topic because I feel like, so the harmonious architecture is based off of what is found in corporate America, because they do a lot of things right, but ultimately the, the business model and the business framework that small businesses are copying is broken. And when you look at those bigger companies, you just have really just cogs in a wheel. You have people showing up to work, they're making widgets, they're not connected, they don't really care. Um, and I, so the two disciplines that we're already touching on is the I, which stands for inspire, which would traditionally be called leadership in corporate America. You have to inspire your team to chase the mission and vision of the company. And then the H is home. Humans optimize in a meaningful environment. I love that you see that as, as both working together for the greater good, because if your employees are not showing up and motivated to work, the company's not going to succeed. It doesn't matter how much you pay, what, what your incentives are. Um, and I'm excited to dive in here. Before we do, though, how did you get into this space? This is a very unique space and not a whole lot of people specialize here. What's, what's your path to get here? Uh, I'll try to keep it short, but I uh, went to college for engineering, was a giant computer nerd, loved it, left college after two years because I wanted to be a paid firefighter, needed to get a job, uh, became a personal trainer. It was easy. And I was also, I got a free gym membership, which was more important than the personal training side, but I got the free gym membership. I uh, grew the ladder there pretty quickly, hit goals, uh, started working for a small footprint gym then turned that into buying my own, eventually owning 17 different locations in five different states that were uh, brick and mortar, whether it be massage or large group fitness or small group personal training or just personal training and just continue to grow. But I was able to open businesses at a faster rate or take over businesses and turn it around or grow my businesses bigger than other people were. People started asking me for help, started to help them and then all of a sudden, a franchise was, hey, do you want to have a competition and see who can open uh, one of our massage studios better? And I'm like, I'm always down for a competition. Uh, well, long story short, I almost 3 x their output. And I spent and had significantly less resources than them. And they just were like astounded by it. And it was my first moment of like real consulting that I got a taste of. But the cool thing was in that moment, not that it, it was really cool that I beat them and I got a... I got a custom engraved bottle of scotch, which was, you can't beat that, right? But anyways, that was cool. But 
when I really sat back and thought about what had just happened, I set a new standard for a franchise that had over 400 locations in it for future people coming in to open their businesses. And it was in that moment that I truly, for the first time, felt an unlocking of impact that was greater than me to you, greater than let's do push-ups, let's eat this, let's do a cardio, whatever it might be. And it was no longer one to one, but one to many. And then that one to many, those people could go and help all of the people I used to be helping. So it, it unlocked this new passion, which was pretty cool. And started my journey of doing some consulting for businesses, some franchises, and loved it. But then this whole corporate I just, the game didn't, I didn't love the game. And when I'm battling with CMOs that went to school and have how much debt and everything like that on how to do marketing, and believe me, I have a lot to learn in marketing. But with this thing behind me, I feel like I, I should at least earn your ear for like 10 to 15 <laughs> minutes on some wild, crazy ideas. Like I, I should be able to get you to listen to something. And I was done battling with this last corporate person. I was like, screw it. I'm going back to the entrepreneurial world. I don't want to deal with these big corporate uh, companies anymore and deal with all of these people that they have their fancy pieces of paper on their wall that think it makes them smarter. So I started working for some other companies, doing some stuff for them. And it was back in the online kind of coaching and information space. And I started to see this big gap. And it was all these mantras and these beating the chest of do the work, get the work done, you're lazy, you're not working hard enough, rise and grind, and all of these things. And yeah, there's an element of you have to wake up and get things done. Like you have to be motivated and be consistent to get things done. I'm not going to argue that that's false, wrong, whatever. Like we all know, if you don't put in the work, you're not going to get the result. But nobody was able to create a way or a system, or at least that I had come across to help people get the work done, to help people more importantly, get the right work done and to help people get the right work done while asking the right questions, therefore decreasing the time to get to the finish line. And as I started going through this, you start uncovering and it's like, I, I have a seven step framework. We were kind of joking about it before. My framework is the freedom framework. What person in this world doesn't want freedom? It's a good right. question. We all right. do. Especially if you're a business owner. Like, it's just like, all right, cool. That makes sense. It resonates. And it is the thing that unlocks your freedom. But the next thing I started to find as I started consulting for businesses is I can't just go in and plug, here's your seven questions to ask yourself because they suck at being leaders. Employees suck at being employees. There's no accountability. People have no guardrails and, and scheduling understanding and how to manage their day. There's all these fundamentals that happen. And at the core of all of these missteps is the communication lapse that's happened. Project management and using whatever tool you love, sure, it's about checking boxes and understanding where we're at in a project, but it's a communication tool. Doing reviews with people every 30 or 90 days, sure, it's about checking the box and making sure you're hitting your goals or not. It's a communication tool. Everything at its core is a communication tool. And if you don't use them appropriately, you're not communicating well and people don't understand what has to happen. And that's ultimately what landed me right now where I'm at today. Yeah, I, I think that's spot on. And uh, you we're, we're speaking the same language. A lot of the things you said show up in the harmonious architecture. Well, everything does. That's the whole point of it. But um, the, the root of it, freedom, full disclosure, the S in harmonious stands for now serenity. That's as business owners, as leaders, that's what we're chasing, right? It's yep. the traditional discipline in business of time management, but can't manage time. We could just manage how we show up in time. So when we chase serenity, that's what does our calendar look like? What does our lives look like? How does our business, you know, interact with ourselves as the owners, our employees? It used to be called freedom, but there's no F in the word harmonious. So we renamed it to serenity. So I want to I want to really dive into this this framework here, the freedom framework and see how you go through this process. So can we can we take this apart a little bit? We're not going to give yeah. this sauce away because you got to work with Steve to get that. Um, but can we at least start the first half of the framework and see where it gets us? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll run through all seven steps. Uh, you know, I, I consider myself a professional question asker. 
I, I know how to ask the right questions and, and phrase things appropriately to get the responses that are necessary to move something forward. Um, so understanding the framework, like this is the thing I want to give to the world. And going through the process, you can go on my Instagram and you'll find me break it down there too. So it, it's out there, right? You awesome. Go for it, have fun with it. Like go, go crush whatever goal you're working on with these seven steps. Um, step number one is filter. You need to understand what you need to be working on. What is the process? What is the thing? What is the focus? What is the attention going to right now? And we need to filter that. There is a formula that I plug in under there. I call it the profit per acquisition formula. I won't bore you with numbers because if I'm not writing, it starts to get a little kind of confusing. But there is a formula on there, which is a simplified way to convert emotion into logic so you can have a really consistent way to diagnose what you're working on in your business and what you should be working on in your business and make sure we continue to check in. Cause when we look at our KPIs and we go, all these things are broken. There's 40 numbers spread across this board. What's the most important. And you, everybody takes a guess and a stab based upon what they like, what they're comfortable with, what they're good at, what, whatever. But usually it's not the thing that's the most broken or the thing that provides the most opportunity. So Step one, that F is filter. Figure out what you need to be working on. Number two is you got to relate it. You have to relate it to a person, a process, a system, something. It has to get done. A lot of times we'll sit here in a room, in a boardroom, there's six people, big table, and we're, huh, here's all the, we need more widgets, whatever the thing is. All right, cool. And then you move on. But there's nobody who at the end of the day is ultimately held accountable to getting this thing across the finish line. So now that we figured out, we filtered what has to happen, relate it to, again, a system, a person, a process, whatever that's going to get it to the finish line. And it, it sounds dumb, but it's it's like we're all taught in CPR. Somebody goes down, you got to start giving CPR. You don't go to the room and go, somebody call 911 because everybody assumes everybody else is doing it. You literally go, you Call 911 and that person is now responsible. They the the task at hand was related to them, so they have to go get it done. Um, the first E, step three, is educate. Oftentimes we don't know all of the answers, we don't know the process, we don't know the possibilities we can use to actually jump in and solve the thing we're working on solving. And when I say educate, it's also and I your beliefs might be wrong. I hate to say it. I hate it. It's 2024. And I know How we can't you, like, Steve. I, I know it's a sensitive topic, but go out there and find other opportunities to learn by thinking about it a different way. Stop doing what you've always done because what you've always done got you here, which is why the damn thing is broken. So find opposing point of views and listen. Don't get offended. It's not personal. You don't suck. They don't suck. But go and educate yourself on what the options are, what the opportunities look like, what are the different routes we could take, and then start to figure out here's the path we're going to go down. But don't just sit there, oh, we're going to do more of the same thing. Well, that's dumb. I am sorry. It's just dumb. Um, step four is go. <laughs> so uh, educate moving over to empower. Step four, the second E. Empower is now business owners, and, and it's it's to different degrees. If you're a smaller business, you're a solopreneur, you obviously can't hand things off. But as you're growing and you have a team, owners and business owners, entrepreneurs tend to be bad at giving up control. So empower your team to actually go get it done. But here's the cool thing. Well, Steve, this, this step doesn't apply to me because I don't have a team or my team's too small. Amazing. I still want you to ask that question every time because what we start prompting is, oh, I would empower, I would give this thing to that position, that person to do. That should start to be the note taking that we need to do as leaders and go, this is a shortcoming in my business. If I don't have the operations if I don't have my director of operations locked in and I keep coming back to, I would empower a director of operations to do this thing that should start highlighting to you. The actual person you might think about hiring first should budget and everything start to arise because you continue to find fundamental issues there. So empower, hand it off and, or 
I don't have them to give it to. Start taking those notes. That might be the person that you need to hire. So those are our first four steps. Moving in there. So D, define. Define the success criteria. We often jump in and go start solving this problem, and we don't know what success truly looks like. We don't know what the outcome is that we're trying to create. So start to define those and be very specific. By this day, at this time, we're going to create this much leads, revenue, reduce my churn, increase client satisfaction, increase my ENPS, whatever the thing might be, but put specifics around it. Chances are you're going to go, well, I haven't solved it to this level before. I don't know what to put. Cool. It's a learning experience, but you should have some semblance of expectations. Let's say your closing rate's at 20%. Well, I want to get to 80%. Somebody's going to tell you that's not realistic. It won't be me though. I need you to eventually tell me it's unrealistic. But what I need you to do is say, I want to get to 80%. Amazing. 80% is the number. Wrong, right, or indifferent. I don't care. On the other side of solving the problem, did we get to 80%? Yes or no? Well, yes. Amazing. You showed everybody. No. Cool. Why not? I overestimated. I didn't understand the process or the problem or the solve enough. I internally didn't figure this piece out. And it's a learning lesson. Yet again, we set ourselves up to ask that question. So you might not perfectly hit the success criteria that you've defined, but you're making sure during a debrief session, you can ask the right questions. The O is optimize. As we're debriefing and we go down this road, hey, we hit this thing, whatever it is, with existing, that's the key, with the existing resources I currently have, money, team, systems, whatever, can I squeeze more juice out of this? Can I increase the ROI? Can I speed it up? Whatever it is. Existing resources, can I get more? The M, maximize. If I introduce an additional resource, more people, spend more money, better systems, whatever, can I warrant it by getting increased ROI, output, whatever it might be? So O and M, main difference, existing versus new, and ask those questions. A lot of time, oh, I'm going to hire somebody to go do this thing. Cool, you're going to pay them 100 grand a year. Yeah. How much revenue are they going to generate? 50 grand. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. Like, just don't do that. I'm going to hire somebody, hundred grand. How much can they produce? 500 grand. Amazing. Like, go do that. That sounds perfect. And why you would want to hire somebody for this thing. And if we go through that process, we not only start and understand and build our, our, our flow, but we also get to the end. We ask those right questions and we start to have now a simplified logic driven way on how to effectively manage the problem solving that's happening on our business and get to truly what should be the finish line for everybody as we're navigating the entrepreneurial journey of business growth. That's fantastic. I love, I love the framework. I love the process of how you take people through that. Um, and it's, I can already see how that plays out and you're already connecting employees and leadership to that bigger future that we're all chasing. <clears throat> I, I really disagree with people when they say, leadership has to dictate the direction and and hands off and let the employees handle it that's a recipe for failure and I, I think your your framework clearly identifies why that's failure and why this is way better it, it's got to be collaborative especially in today's day and age we're we're not living in a world where top-down leadership is the thing that just happens anymore mm -hmm. too many people want flexibility and freedom and the ability to be creative in what they do so Sure, somebody has to ultimately be responsible and it's always going to fall on the business owner's shoulders. And through an end of a conversation, if it's 50-50 split, the business owner is going to make the decision the way they think is best and they should. But it should still involve conversation because you understand the whys, the hows, you understand some of the thought process. And it's an ability for somebody to grow and again, break some of your beliefs. I know. That's twice you said it. You're going to get us canceled now. <laughs> <laughs> working on it cancel culture here we come That's right <laughs> oh man i love it yeah the two the two ends of the spectrum are top-down leadership which just doesn't work in today's day and age really never worked but we did it for a long time and the other ideology is that employees don't want to work and i think that's also completely false this there is a very wide middle road too wide for the screen. See, I'll, I'll narrow it. But it's very wide Absolutely. middle road of where, where this framework fits, where what we talk about within the harmonious architecture is 
you have it's a collaborative approach. The, the whole point of business is to collaborate together, have employees tied to the mission and the vision, have leadership, empowering employees. Steve, you, you hit the nail on the head. I love it. I'm going to give you the W for a lot of reasons, but I love you. I love the framework. I love the way you explain it. Uh, your background is outstanding. You definitely beat me there. And your camera moves every time you move. So, I mean, I just, I can't compete with this guy. He's too good. <laughs> oh, man. But we got to wrap this episode up. If you want to learn more about Steve, uh, I got your website here. I'll toss it on the screen. If you're listening, it's in the show notes. But Steve, where can we learn more about this framework? Follow along and uh, maybe take that next step. Yeah, pretty much find me on every social media platform and search my name, uh, Stephen, S-T-E-P-H. I got to make it a little bit difficult. E-N, my parents, I guess, did. Uh, Copshaw, K-O-P-S-H-A-W. So Instagram, Facebook tends to be where I hang out most. Awesome. We will definitely link to all that in the show notes as well. Um, thank you again for coming on. This is a cool conversation. And for those of you listening, watching, wherever you are, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more content like this and you know how to grow your business, not just hearing cool stuff. In terms of the harmonious architecture, we already touched on it a number of times. I think Steve went through all 10 of the disciplines at some point. I won't go in detail, but the ones we spent a lot of time talking about were inspire, poem, serenity, and the mixture between those three, the, the way they link, that's the magic. You have to understand that it's not just 10 individual departments and silos within a company. It's how the whole company comes together. Everything plays together. And of course, Steve said it too, asking the right questions. That's the logo behind me. Make sure you constantly ask questions. And the most important question of all is what if? I'll leave you with that. Thanks for another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.